Welcome to It Is Always Now with Marty Long. Get ready to open up and let true joy into your life. Join Marty for conversations about inclusivity and respect, the importance of curiosity, and making change happen. Your journey of exploration and discovery into the greater world around us begins now. Here's Marty. Greetings. My name is Marty Long. My goal is to encourage you to awaken your curiosity. Curiosity is what keeps us seeking and finding truth and lasting joy. Topic today is journaling. And I want to start with a brief history, which I found on Shrivener.com. S-C-R-I-V-E-I-N-E-R.com. Here they give us a history of journaling. And here's my brief synopsis. Once explorers began traversing the earth, they found the need to record their discoveries so they could remember all the details and share them with others. And yes, they called these journals. Explorers such as Captain Cook, Lewis and Clark, and Darwin. Since the late 18th century, writers, artists, other creatives have used this diary or journal as an integral part of their creative process. Writers such as Tolstoy, Kafta, Virginia Woolf, Catherine Mansfield. In the 60s and 70s, journal writing for personal growth and emotional wellness became more well-known. People realized it was an avenue for self-discovery and self-exploration. Finally, even the medical and therapeutic communities began to use the journal writing as a way to give people a holistic, non-medicinal method for wellness. And now here we are in the 21st century. We have the digital. The blogger, the Facebook user, the Twitter user, the YouTube user, and the list goes on and on. As a result of all of these avenues of self-expressing, we've noticed that there is a desire more than ever before to record the intimate details of our lives and make them a public affair. There's more of an urge to reveal rather than to conceal, as was often the case with earlier generations. But I think this dichotomy exists for a reason. I think there are times when we really maybe should keep a few things hidden, secret. And I think most people understand that. And when someone doesn't understand that, well, we get a little TMI. Just a few years ago, I was in a group where the leader said, you must not use a computer to journal. The computer lets you change things. The only thing that matters is the first thing that pops into your head. Really? I don't think so. Others will tell you that you really must journal every day. Really? I don't think so. When someone starts with you must or you must not, my antenna goes up. It's kind of like what I talked about in my Shred the Checklist podcast. But yes, journaling has proven to be a very valuable tool in my life. So let's dig in. You be the judge. First, we're going to define what a journal is. Now, as usually, as usual, Webster gives us multiple words and nuances, but here's the one that really works for our discussion today. A record of experiences, ideas, or reflections. So it's a record of what? Our experiences, ideas, and reflections. But exactly how do we do that? Well, I find there are many ways we can do that. I've actually come up with nine different ways that I believe we can journal. We'll see what you think. The traditional one, of course, is in that bound book, sometimes with lines on the pages, blank, so you can write with a pen or a pencil. 
As an aside, one reason that traditional write on a page, a blank paper with a pen does not work for me is this. I can't read my own handwriting 10 minutes later, especially if I'm writing fast. And I don't know about you, but my thoughts flow much faster than my pen. So I lose thoughts in the process. And then I can't read the ones I did remember. When I was a senior in high school, I only had one, maybe two required courses left to take in order to get my high school diploma and be able to move on to college. But I agreed with my father, who was a teacher, that I really wasn't ready for college. So I had my senior year. I filled it with many activities, and I filled class time with electives. Looking back, I see this as a special, pivotal time in my life. One of the electives I took was the second year of typing. I had taken the first year several years prior. Now I decided to take the second year. And I've often said that this is one of the most practical and useful classes I took in all of high school. The one that has benefited me the most in my life. And happily for me, when computers came along, this transitioned very well to a computer keypad. So I can type almost as fast as my thoughts flow. So that is one way to journal. Just write in a book with blank pages. Here's the second way I came up with. A set of thoughts or observations that you type out on a computer and put in a safe folder. In other words, instead of writing by hand, you do it on a computer. And I do this definitely more than writing in that book. These are examples of written words, words that are recorded and saved as the record of experiences. Number three, I think there's a verbal journal. Think about it. When you talk things through with someone you trust, let's say you're sitting in the backyard with a very good friend and you each have a glass of wine and you share your thoughts and experiences. Well, in this case, your memory is the record of experiences. Number four, picture books. I can't leave this out. You know, this is the kind of book where you can take your own pictures and bring them into some site that lets you design a little book. Personally, I like the Walgreens site best. And you can add notes to the pictures if you want to. I have found that over the last few years, I have relied on this more and more. I've done quite a few in the last few years. I like to use the big 12 by 12 inch ones for the large trips we've taken, smaller ones for the years when we didn't do so much, and smaller ones even still for very specific events. Now, one reason, of course, that this works for me is because I am very visual. For me, a picture truly is worth a thousand words. For me, there really is no better way to keep a record of my experiences. The thing is that once words are written, we kind of think of them as being static. But each time you look at a picture, it might bring a different memory, one you had not thought of before, one you probably wouldn't have thought of if this had all been written in stone. I find that even specific feelings come back as I look at my books, and it makes me smile. In this case... Pictures are a trigger for that record of experiences. Now, some people like to use an app on their phone and catch a thought on the fly, record it. And I can see that. I haven't tried it, but I think I'm going to because you have a thought and it's going to be a while before you get back to your office, your computer, or have time to write in it a paper journal, because you have to finish shopping, pick up the kids, whatever. So if you can whip out your phone and just record those thoughts really quickly, you don't lose them. Number six, 
What do you think about this one? My definition for meditation is taking time to let the thoughts swirling around in your head come together in a meaningful way. For me, meditation becomes a way that I can sort out and make sense of and reflect on my experiences and ideas. Bottom line, of course, I do believe journaling is very beneficial. In fact, for me, I would call it essential. It is a way to enhance personal growth and emotional wellness. It leads to self-discovery and self-exploration. I just refuse to limit it to one method. Number seven, wordsmithing. As I described in an earlier podcast, when I am typing something out on my computer, often the first pass contains a lot of emotion, which isn't always particularly helpful. So I go over it, I rewrite it, I wordsmith, until I have found the best way to share what I'm thinking, whether it's to someone else or for myself later, it is much more cohesive and, well, a little less emotional. For me, this process is another type of journaling. There are so many words, and the first words that come to my mind, at least, is seldom the most appropriate. Yet another way to sort out my experiences, ideas, and reflections. Number eight. Let's ponder a bit about social media journaling. And I think we're all doing it one way or another, whether we think of it that way or not. And that really is a record of experiences, ideas, and reflections, which is one reason I think Facebook offers every year that you can make a book out of your year. They pull the pictures in and they take the words that you wrote in your Facebook postings. And for a while, I actually used Facebook for a lot of time, almost every day. And I did one of those books and I loved it. I, I was really impressed by how that turned out. And I choose to believe that most of us know what to keep secret and what's appropriate to share. Just wanted to throw that back in there. So number nine. Another much more subtle way to journal is with our DNA in programs like 23andMe. People discover who they are, who they're related to. They make connections. Some murder mysteries have even been solved. It's a way of connecting with someone who's part of you. You learn more about them. They learn more about you. And both of your lives become more enriched. In most cases, just the other day, someone was telling me about a doctor who was artificially inseminating women, only he always used his own semen. Most of these women lived within 70 miles of each other. So all of a sudden, people begin to realize that they had more half siblings than they could wrap their heads around. In this case, it was the genes that revealed experiences led to many ideas and lots of reflection. Sorry, I just couldn't resist throwing that in there. Now, I want to go back to those who say you should journal every day. I think they often mean, in the written format, the book with blank pages. And to that I say, you know. But if we expand journaling to mean more of the nine ways we've discussed, well, then I would come closer to saying, yes, it would be good to do some of these each day, but I still don't think we want to say, you have to, you must. Because what happens then is you back yourself into that corner, that corner where you feel you must do something every day and because you couldn't do it, you start to feel guilty. I mean, there are days when you're running around, doing chores, working, whatever else is in your life. And guilt is absolutely counterproductive to the entire concept. 
but striving for doing something every day, I think that's a good goal. Well, of course, I had to look up some quotes, and I was kind of surprised. And honestly, working on this podcast has helped me acquire a whole new appreciation for journaling. I'm going to go back and try some of these other ideas that I really hadn't thought of or done before. I hope it's helped you too. First quote, William Wordsworth. Fill your paper with the breathings of your heart. Christina Baldwin. Journal writing is a voyage to the interior. Hannah Hitchman. The best time to begin keeping a journal is whenever you decide to. At Hannah's point, I find that I do not write in my journal, my paper journal, unless I have an experience that I have thought through and I want to reflect on. It's all very random for me. Here's a quote from Mia Murray. Journaling is like whispering to oneself and listening at the same time. It's a great way to talk to yourself. Here's one not attributed to any specific person. The best way to predict the truth, the future, is to create it. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And I would add, one of the best ways to create the future is to reflect on the past based on your experiences, ideas, and reflections. Flannery O'Connor. I write because I don't know what I think until I read what I say. Okay, that is me. Right there, that is me. I don't know what I think until I read what I say. Sitting at my computer, plugging into the keypad, and typing away works for me. That is the best way I have to think things through. And Sexton, put your ear down close to your soul and listen hard. Put your ear down close to your soul and listen hard. For some reason, that saying makes me think of the song Hallelujah. And that's reflecting. Brings us to the point, again, to emphasize the value of being honest with ourselves in journalism, journaling. You know, I wonder if there aren't people out there who write a journal that isn't necessarily real. Maybe it helps them think things through that way. Hadn't thought of that till just now. Now, I do have, as I've said, a physical journal where I can write on blank pages with a pen. And where I go to deal with personal things, you know, the things I'm keeping secret. But sometimes I smile when I think about somebody finding my secrets years after I have moved on to the next life. For the fun of it, I went to the little journal in the table that is in my special corner where I often meditate and pulled out my journal. My last entry, June 18 of 2022. Almost a year now. What can I say? I guess I didn't have a lot of secrets lately. Letters can fall into this category also. Letters, for example, from family members. And I heard, I heard one story where a son found letters going through his mother's belongings after she passed away. The, the letters were from her brother. Now, she had mentioned her brother once earlier in his life, and then she never referred to him again. She kind of wrote him off and blocked him out. Interestingly, she did not destroy these letters, but neither did she share them. And in this case, those letters might have changed lives had they been found earlier. I can't help wondering, did she intentionally keep them for her son to he find later? Or did she intend to destroy them someday and someday just never came because she really couldn't part with them? Bottom line, if you're journaling, that's great. Maybe try some different ways to record your experiences, ideas, or reflections. 
If you haven't tried it, I really suggest you do. Try some of these suggested methods. Find what works best for you. We'll leave it there. In the meantime, think about this. It is always the time to reflect and learn from our experiences and ideas. Now is always the time to review and record. It is always now.